Hi everyone, welcome to your weekly edition of Show Me How It's Done. My name is Lauren Arbonis and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I have a very special card to share with you today. It is one that's featuring a online exclusive suite that we have available and it was available as of March 2024. So this suite is online only. If you go to my website, learnerbonus.stampinup.net, I listed that at the bottom, and just in the search box type online exclusives, you'll be guided to a page that shows you a bunch of stamps, paper, there's punches, embossing folders, things that Stamping Up is offering exclusively online. There's kits as well, and they aren't showing up in any catalog prints, mainly because Stamping Up is able to then gauge how popular they are, and if things are really popular, they can just order another batch of them instead of them selling out and being discontinued. So I'm using Latte Love today, and I'll just show you what this suite looks like. There is a great little stamp set, so if you are a coffee or a tea lover, maybe hot chocolate, this is for you or your friends. And there is a coordinating die set as well. Some of the pieces will complement the stamps, some of them will complement the designer series paper. And then there's a few things like the French press and the kettle that you can build from scratch as well and these mini cups. So lots and lots of potential in this suite and I've only skimmed the surface of what we're able to do with it so far. So lots of good ideas in this set. There is coordinating designer series paper as well. I have used quite a bit of it because I've made um, cards both for my monthly cup club card in April and my March one using this paper. Um, so in April we actually made this card here and there was the choice of the Calypso Coral, the Lemon Lolly, or the Lost Lagoon Little Cup to decorate. And then we of course used some of the designer series paper to add pattern. Last month I used a couple of these kind of swirl pieces to make ice cream cones because I thought it doesn't always have to be a coffee that you use your sets for. I did do a show me how it's done video for that so make sure to head back to my channel and if you haven't liked and subscribed to my channel then I'd really appreciate your support and you get notified anytime I post a random video. I do post every Tuesday, but in case I post an extra video, it also gives you that potential to view those as well. Because I did do a uh, retiring list walkthrough, I'll probably do a catalog launch unboxing video, lots and lots of fun things that pop up every once in a while. But I've used part of the pack, so not everything you see There'll maybe be a couple pieces I've missed, but lots and lots of fun. This is a great paper pack if you want some nice neutral colors as well. Here we go. If you would like to craft along with me, I have put all of the measurements for this project in the description on the video, and you can hit pause right now and go cut those but I will also give them to you as we go so that you can craft along and hopefully have all of those ideas too. So I need to grab my kit. There we go. Here's all my pieces and let's begin. Okay, so this card is a fun one. It opens like so. And at the end, I'm gonna show you a fun little twist with it too that I didn't design on my first go around, but you'll like it. First off, we're gonna start with our card base. So I'm choosing to use early espresso. This will be four and a quarter by eight and one quarter. So a little shy of that eight and a half. And then we're doing a score mark here at two and three quarters. So eight and a quarter by, or four and a quarter by eight and a quarter and putting a score mark at two and three quarters. Now I'm gonna do the inside of my card first. I'm starting with a piece of Lost Lagoon cardstock. I could have chosen just to use white, but I thought it looked a little plain because we're seeing so much of that inside of the card from the front. So we're adding Lost Lagoon. This one is going to be four inches by five and one quarter. 
and you're going to put it on with some sort of flat adhesive. So tape, seal, whatever you've got on hand. And then next we're going to add a piece of basic white. So this is going to be three and three quarters by five inches. And just a little adhesive. I love my take your pick tool because it's just got a nice pokey end. You can lift all those backings off. And then because I had extras and it was fun, I'm cutting just a little strip of designer series paper. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. Whew. That's me. Okay, so when I'm cutting a lot of my card kits and projects, I often end up with these little scraps and they can easily be thrown in the recycling. But if you cut them and put them on the inside of your cards, they actually add a lot of character. So this one happens to be half an inch wide, but if you had something that was three quarters of an inch, even a full inch, you can still use it. You just have to trim it down to three and three quarters inch in length. So don't cut this just from like a brand new 12 by 12 paper. Wait till you're done crafting and use your scraps to decorate the inside. I want you wrecking a brand new 12 by 12 just to get this little strip. I guarantee you'll have them left over if you're creating with that paper. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the front of our card for now. This is going to have a beautiful piece of designer series paper on it. And of course, they're all double-sided. You can choose what works for you. So this piece is going to be two and a half inches by four inches. And I'm putting it on, once again, just with a flat adhesive. Nice on the front of the card. Don't stick there. You are not even at all. There we go. That's better. All right, I'm going to move this base aside for the moment because I'd like to work on this top little piece, but it's easiest to do on a flat surface, kind of on its own. So we're gonna start with a piece of early espresso, and that piece is going to be two and three quarters by four and one quarter. And then a coordinating designer series paper that is two and a half by four. So we will layer these two together. Just gonna lift that up so I can, well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Here, there we go. Okay, here is my nice little deco piece. So the next thing I want to focus on is my sentiment. So I have cut a little rectangle. This is not from the Latte Love Suite. This is from the Everyday Details dies. You can use any die set that you have, um, but I really like the stitching on this one. And I'm going to bring over my early espresso ink that's matching my cardstock and the sentiment from our set that says, hello there, let's catch up. There's also a really nice thank you one, but I am going to pass this along to a friend and uh, hopefully we can get together for a coffee soon just to let them know I'm thinking of them. It does just barely fit in that rectangle. That's why I like the photopolymer sets. You can see straight through them. And I'm quite happy with that. If I had made a mistake, I could turn this over or I could cut out a new one. It doesn't really matter. Uh, that's why we do our stamping off of the card so you don't have to undo it. We're going to pop this up on a couple dimensionals and put it in the top right-hand section of this little tag. So leaving just 
a little border around that top and right hand side. Next, we're going to build our French press. So I will move this out of your way. Sorry, I'm going to just fix a little crooked. There we go. I'm going to move that. We're going to build our French press. So using the dies from Latte Love, you're going to cut out the French press itself using your cardstock. So I used Lost Lagoon. You're going to cut out this large... Um, kind of glass base and I used vellum for that. You can use a window sheet but I think vellum is a little subtle and it's a lot more forgiving than the window sheet which kind of gets fingerprints. And then this is my little pile of coffee. If you really really want to you can use some of these deckled um, little dies here to cut like a blue um, or a, I guess vellum as well rim of water so it kind of looks like the reflection is sitting on the top. I didn't just because I wasn't going to be that particular and then of course you could substitute a coffee pot instead of a French press if you'd like because that would be maybe a teapot too. Okay so this guy is in early espresso and we're gonna have to use some glue but remember less is more when you're working with vellum. You want the bare minimum of glue because you don't want it to kind of smush and then smear all over and have a big mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put like a couple drops on. Sorry, that was a very gooey top. So I'm just gonna put a few drops on the back here. Nothing very major. And I'm moving this down towards the bottom of my glass container. So it doesn't have to be right at the bottom, but almost at the bottom with about an even border on the right and the left. Okay, and then very gently pressing that into place. We'll have to leave this alone for a few minutes to dry, um, but that's why we're doing it next so that you'll be able to use the time to cut out your designer series paper well, this is setting. Now for your French press, I know it's very tempting to turn this over and add all sorts of adhesive to the back, but you don't want to do that because half of these pieces are not actually going to touch your vellum. They're going to in fact um, be hanging off of the press and it would make quite a mess if you did that. So we're only putting adhesive on this middle band and this middle band. That's it. Two dots of adhesive and that's good to go. You don't need any more than that. When I turn this over, I will line my top up so it's just got that spout kind of hanging out the top. Press this into place and this does dry clear so don't worry if you've kind of landed in the wrong spot first. That's it. We're going to let this dry, move it out of our way for the moment. That gives you enough time to cut one of these beautiful little cups out of your designer series paper. If you have the dies, they coordinate perfectly. If you don't, then I guess you can't make the French press, but you'll have to fussy cut from the paper as well. Okay, it doesn't need a long time to dry, so I'm just going to be very gentle. I'm going to turn my French press over. And we're going to put dimensionals on the back, but only where there's cardstock in front of it. So I'm going to put a nice big dimensional down here at the bottom because that's where that brown paper for the coffee is sitting so no one can see it from the front. Then I'm also going to put a dimensional up in this top section, half over the vellum and half on the cardstock, and that is also going to be hidden by the lid of your French press. Those are the only two dimensionals we need because when I flip this over, I don't see any dimensionals from the front. So you're being a mystery. This goes just off to the left hand side of that tag. And it doesn't matter if a bit of it is coming off the top and the bottom. It still fits within the card itself um, because we're putting this tag on sideways. Now when I'm adding my little cup, I'm just putting one dimensional to the right hand side of my French press 
then I know that I'm not centering my cup off kilter and it will be evenly placed right there. Sorry, I need a drink. I have a nice little dry cough that won't go away. It's four weeks and it's still tickling my throat. Okay, here's my cute little cup for this guy. I just rested part of it over the bottom of the French press and part of it onto the edge of my little um, coffee bean designer paper. Okay, when you're ready, we're going to bring our card base back. And the idea is we're wanting to attach this piece now to this flap. We don't want to attach the whole thing because then your card will be closed. So if you were to put adhesive all over this, the card would close up. It would be pretty, but there would be no way for you to open it and write a little message to your friends or family. So the easiest way to just get your dimensionals in the right place is to put them straight onto this panel here. We're going to put about four large dimensionals or maybe six small ones just in the middle right and kind of the center of this panel. You do want to just be very careful that you're not putting anything too high because this doesn't go up to the top or bottom or too low and we're not going all the way to the left hand side because again we are leaving a really fat border. So just in this centralized area towards the right of that panel that's where you're going to put your dimensionals. And then this little guy gets centered as much as you can on your card. So you'll try to have kind of a uh, even right and left border. They have about a half an inch and then there's about a three quarters of an inch on the top and the bottom here. So you don't have to get a ruler, but just try to make it as even as possible. Okay, and then do we remember that I mentioned I had one more surprise for you? So I didn't do it on this card here, on my sample, but as I was thinking about this, I had this light bulb of memory that I was like, I feel like I've made a card like this before, and we've put a gift card in it. And how perfect when you're making a coffee card if you made a gift card holder. So I have a Tim Hortons gift card, and imagine if you will, it can fit perfectly on this little panel. So we're going to cut one more piece of designer series paper and this will not be included in your description because I just thought of it um, as I was sitting down to film. So uh, this piece is going to measure one and a half inches by four and one eighth. We want it just smaller than this section here and this is four and a quarter if you'll remember so if you do it at four inches it's getting a little small because we do need room for that gift card to still fit in but if you make it four and one eighth by one and a quarter that is perfect now the key when you're doing this is we need a simple small adhesive so I have this very skinny one eighth of an inch double-sided tape that I'm going to use. You can use glue if you don't have this, um, but you can't really use the nice thick tape because it won't leave enough room for your gift card to sit in there. So I'm putting this as close to the edge as I can on my cardstock, and I'm doing the bottom and two sides. We're making a pouch somewhere for your gift card to sit. So we don't want this fully enclosed. And my handy take your pick tool is going to come in uh, in hand here because this is tiny tape. There we go. There's one, two, and three. Okay. So just remember we had tape on three sides. So left, right, and bottom. So if I was to turn this over, I need to make sure that the side with no tape is facing this large section at the top because that's where we're sliding the gift card into. Okay, and we're gonna rest this 
as snugly as we can, tiniest of borders on the left and right, and just kind of right along that score line down here. So then you can slide a gift card in that section you can send this off to somebody and say, hey, here's a date and a time and a coffee card. Let's meet up. So I thought this was a really cute idea for you to send off to somebody special. Or if you just want an encouragement card or a birthday card for the coffee lover in your life, then you don't need to add the gift card holder. But I figured I might as well give you the idea and you can take it or leave it. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to go check out all the other online exclusive products. And if you don't have a demonstrator, please reach out. We have a brand new catalog starting May 1st, and uh, I do have many of you across Canada who I've already put on the mailing list. You should be receiving your catalogs by the first week in May, but if you don't have a demonstrator and you're anywhere in Canada, let me know. I can get you one sent, and, uh, and then you'll be all set up for the next year of stamping up goodies. This, as I mentioned, is online only, so you'll have to check out my website. And if you have any questions ever about the projects or the um, items online, please reach out and I'm happy to answer them for you. I will see you next Tuesday for another edition of Show Me How It's Done. Bye!